Let's talk about writing formulas for ionic uh, binary compounds. So let's just review real fast. An ionic compound, all ionic compounds make salts. Okay, so they are they are salts. What makes an ionic compound is a metal and a nonmetal, or that creates the salt or the ionic compound. So metal and a nonmetal. The metal is the cation, it has a positive charge, the anion is the negative charged nonmetal. We really need to use the PR table for this. You'll notice in the PR table supplied for you in Schoology, you'll see this line here, and this really separates the metals from the nonmetals. Hydrogen does belong over here for this, but that's where you can see, oh, I got metals over here. That's a metal. These are nonmetals. These oxidation states, to, to satisfy the octet rule, this is what the atoms in these groups do. They either lose one, lose two, lose three, gain three, gain two, gain one. Noble gases have a full octet. They don't need to do anything with gaining or losing electrons. And then these could do gain or um, lose four electrons. Depending on if it's a positive four, you write it first. If it's a negative four charge, you write it second. So the steps are write the symbols with the oxidation states. You're going to crisscross just the number from the oxidation states, not the sign. And you're going to put that from, take that from the superscript to the other element subscript. And you always want to check if you can reduce the subscripts. We want our formulas to be in the most reduced form. So for lithium oxide, I notice that this is a binary compound. This IDE ending right here tells me it's a binary compound. That's going to help you with knowing which ones are binaries and polyatomic. I notice from my periodic table, I find lithium. Lithium is right here. It's a metal. Oxygen is a non-metal, so I do have a salt here or an ionic compound. So what I want to do is I want to write the symbol with the oxidation state. And you can write plus one or one plus. It's technically one plus and two minus. And we're going to take this and we're going to crisscross our numbers. Now, if you think about this, if I have two lithiums and each one of them have a positive one charge, that's going to be a total of a positive two, right? Two times positive one is positive two. And if I have one oxygen and it has a negative two charge, that's going to be a negative two charge. All compounds have to have zero charges. So to write the final answer for this, it would be lithium two, oxygen one. We don't write the oxygen. Let's try another one. Again, IDE is a binary compound. Magnesium is a metal. Magnesium's here, plus two. Fluoride's over here, minus one. So let's go ahead and rewrite the symbols with the oxidation states. And we are going to crisscross just the numbers. And then when we rewrite it, we do not need to rewrite the ones. There we go. So again, think about this. It takes two magnesium ions. It takes one magnesium ion with a positive two charge to neutralize out two fluoride ions, each with a negative one charge. Because this side is a total negative two. This side is a total of negative positive two, and that equals zero. All right. Let you guys pause the video and try the chloride, calcium chloride. Calcium is a positive 2, chlorine is a minus 1. We're just going to crisscross and rewrite it as. Okay. Let's try one more. Let's try over here. Magnesium oxide. Magnesium. Positive two charge, oxygen minus two charge. Now, a trick here is when these are the same values, the subscript, superscripts, the oxidation states are the same values but opposite charges, you can just cross them out and then it's a one to one ratio. You can crisscross, but then you can reduce that to a one to one ratio. So it would be one to one, and we don't write the ones, it would just be MGO would be our final.